Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or Fitness Pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Untold Physio Stories podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, the Eclectic Approach and Edge Mobility System. And my co-host is... Uh, Dr. Andrew Rothschild. Oh, look, I can see my waveform better. Uh, with Modern Rehab Mastery, Modern Patient Education. Right. You know, one of my strengths, other than clinical, ma- manual therapy, patient education, entrepreneurialism, is also technology. And that is not Andrew's strength. Not I don't at know all. If we, I think we've talked about that before, but he finally has a, a great mic. And um, I think you hopefully will be able to hear the difference because before it was all editing that made Andrew sound as good as he does. <laughs> yeah, they, they, might, they might not have been missing out. Now that they didn't hear me, they might be like, oh, it was better the other way. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Tell them to use the other mic. I mean, literally, I think one of our episodes, he was holding his laptop up to his face. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> right, yeah. Not too professional, but you know, it's a podcast. You can't see. Anyway, um, I haven't mean to talk about this case. This patient often pops into my head as one of the bigger failures that I had on earlier in my career. So this was back before um, I knew anything about pain science, and I was so heavily into manual therapy. I just recently became a manual therapy fellow. Um I was also recently certified in McKenzie um, or Cert MDT, but at the time I had told my instructor that I'm only getting this credential just to get more credentials. I'm never going to use this <laughs> arrogantly. Um, I think Andrew might have had some air, manual therapy arrogance in his past too. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So you know, my my entire practice basically was all. Uh, it revolved around passive assessment, passive treatments. Um, patients would have hour-long evals and 30 to 45-minute follow-ups. And those follow-ups, probably of 30 to 45 minutes, at least 80% of that was manual therapy. <laughs> At some point, they'd also be doing some exercise. And there was one patient in particular. She wasn't my patient, but she was my coworker's patient. And my coworker was probably one of my best mentees ever. He did um, a six-month residency with me. Um, UB has like a six-month residency. At least they used to. They could choose to do like their last clinical and combine two, three months to just do, you know, a specialization under um, an approved mentor. So he wanted to learn manual therapy. He eventually started, I hired him after that. He was an amazing clinician, super intelligent guy. So Amir, I don't know if you're ever listening to this, but this was one of your patients and we'll just call her L. <laughs> So Elle was one of those lifers, you know, she just came two to three times a week for years. And that was, that wasn't uncommon in my practice back then, because I had a more traditional kind of PT practice where a lot of patients, we 
didn't discharge until we finally broke up with them or they finally broke up with us. But she was definitely a lifer. One of those people who just came in for her manual therapy for her chronic knee pain. We did all kinds of tissue work, hip distractions, um, you know, for months and months and months. Finally, someone, um, I, re- I had an in-service from one of my colleagues who was really big into this new thing called functional exercise <laughs> and everything, <laughs> everything should be, you know, forget open chain. Let's just go right to closed chain. And so, you know, we're like, Hey, why don't we start doing closed chain stuff? So after, you know, all these open chain exercises and granted the patient had never really exercised a day in her life either. And she wasn't very coordinated. Um, and I had stopped seeing her after maybe the first couple of weeks, passed her over to my, to my coworker, but I am, I am just much as to blame because she easily could have been my patient for six months. So I remember the first time we got her to step down after um, after doing her, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of manual therapy, her right leg pretty much collapsed. Mm. Like I, she couldn't even step down with like, without like a max assist. And I just thought, oh my gosh, how do you, how is it that you go down the stairs? She's like, oh, uh, well, I never... I never lower myself using my right leg, you know, less in like the, the left leg is the one that's, I guess, in the swing phase of descending stairs. And I just thought, what, what oversight, like, how is it that we've gone this far and she can't even support weight after like five degrees of her knee bending and closed chain? I was, wow. I was so humiliated <laughs> that she was just so weak and it didn't even occur to me that that's why she was having all these issues that we just never did any kind of load. Right. Yeah. Cause back then I just thought manual therapy is going to fix all her pain, right? We've got to get rid of this scar tissue. She had multiple knee surgeries too. I mean, by no means she was a, an easy patient. It's not like she just had knee pain. Um, cause we rolled out her back and I improved her ankle flexibility stuff that I still do now, but I mean, gosh, she was so weak. I just, immediately felt like epic fail. And that was even before epic fail was a, was a term. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it still highlights a, you know, uh, an issue that we probably deal with on a regular basis uh, in healthcare is that is patient satisfaction, you know, in, tr- in terms of trying to uh, meet and address the patient's needs, you know, understanding needs versus wants, you know, they want lots of different things but it's not necessarily what they need to get better. And so I, that can be part of the problem. Sometimes I wonder where they, you know, patients want to feel better. They don't want to do exercise sometimes. How do you bridge that gap? Yeah. I mean, for sure. When we, 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 you know, did a 180 and said, Hey, look, we got to, you got to stop doing all your straight leg raises and your open chain stuff. And we got to concentrate on lunges and, squats and mini lunges and we're going to just start doing all the steps we can because of your problems with steps we got to get the steps right? right and she was not really having that at all i mean especially after months and months and months of passive care and coming from a background of i don't like exercise to begin with yeah but still i mean had we had we emphasized exercise in the beginning and not passive care maybe we'd have turned it around i don't know it's not easy to to kind of convince someone for that and i don't know because i don't have a time machine but right I just, when when she almost fell down, I just had never felt like a bigger failure. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that, that's that could be certainly humbling and a good a good a good wake up call. But then also, you know, I think we I think we're very quick to blame ourselves. I think, and I think in lots of cases we certainly can. But I think there's still a certain amount of it that there's there is some onus on the patient, and you present them with treatment options and say, this is what I'm offering, this is what I think we should do. If they don't want to do that then that now they're going to be left with, you know, the, the ramifications of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely all about that now. So, all right, Andrew, where can people find you? People can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at spear underscore physio. And of course, modern patient education, modern rehab mastery. All right. Have a good day. You too. Well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E, at Modern Rehab Mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors, so one month with each mentor. 
four weeks, tons of modules, lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, so go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q and A's every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility tool, our Edge Restriction System BFR cuffs. That's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR certificate. Uh, I hope to see you at a live eclectic approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy um, in US, Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.